complex. So one thing I did take, make a note of is um, we were told about Madeline's crash activities, and that included handprint stars, salt dough rocket ships, and alien footprints. And I question why there wasn't any... Well, not having them available does not prove anything, but I'm curious as to why there weren't some little saved crafts that Maddie produced during her supposed week there. So do they exist? I don't know. If they are, we haven't seen them. Um... Okay, there was another witness there, but I can't remember the name. <laughs> and here is the questionable description of just the OC staff, not family and friends, say extroverted, lively, vivacious, hyperactive, outgoing, chatty, and family and friends. Um, the OC staff, timid, shy, quiet, discreet, calm, clinging, very shy. And we know that um, Russell O'Brien's daughter and Jane Tanner's daughter is shy and sensitive, quiet and reserved, hangs back, wouldn't say boo to a ghost, and holds on to leg. So when the o Ocean Club staff describe this Thai shimmered quiet discreet child are they really describing Russell O'Brien's daughter and I'll explain to you a little bit later how I believe that happened so that's we've already gone over that whereas clinging you can see that uh, even one of the other children in the same group as Madeline this is three of them, all from the same crash, and uh, they look alike. I'm sure there were more. You can see here that uh, Madeline looks very much similar to the uh, other children. So if you were shown this picture down in the bottom left corner, um, which was the poster for that night, would you, knowing there were lots of other young children, blonde little blonde girls, does she resemble the three on the top which were taken while she was on holiday? I mean, they do look all very different, but this, this looks very, very young. And I have to wonder, and this is just my theory, this is not a fact, is that the reason they used a younger one, if you think about the fact, not the fact, but if, if something had happened to her earlier and they were trying to have everybody believe that um, this is who you're looking for, if they'd have put up the picture from that day, let's say the last picture, especially with, it, with the pink outfit and the hat, what would happen if Catriona, if something had happened earlier, if Catriona said, no, I remember that little girl on Monday, but I don't remember her this week. And by the way, she's wearing what she wore on Sunday. You know, you have to wonder whether they went to that extent to uh, uh, manipulate the fact of putting this uh, younger picture up. really doesn't look like Maddie that was on, on holiday. Here you can see Jane Tanner and her daughter and Maddie. This is just a few location pictures I've put in just so that you can um, see this was the high tea area. This was the tapas bar. Here were the... Uh, tennis courts and the 
kiddies pool up here. This was from an original photo from back in 2007. And those are a lot of locations, which I do have several locations I put together so that uh, to help people. I think I've actually got a video with just locations on it. So if you're kind of curious as to what, uh, what the area was like, then they might uh, help you. So basically, did anyone really see Maddie? Or did they see another child that looked similar to Maddie? And I think that's the end. So I think I was a bit concerned that that would be very kind of boring to, to go through, but I think it was important because now you may question when you say yes people saw Maddie during the week you can look for yourself all of the uh, or if you can't find it just ask I will show you any or all of the graphics in an easy route to read form to show that there really wasn't any credible so that kind of told me the possibility that okay she was last seen on Sunday and I'm wondering how others feel. Are there any questions on that? Hold on just a second. There's been some things said, but I didn't want to put them up over your, um, <laughs> over your video. Well, first thing, and I don't know if I can find it. Um, there's, there's kind of a discussion going on. Um, someone asked whether there was anybody in here that actually thought they were innocent the, the parents were innocent um and then that that leads to the question that i was going to put in there but i didn't um innocent in what way I, because there's so you have whether something happened to her versus she was kidnapped if you throw out the kidnap then you have are they innocent of um hurting her like it was an accident and then, um, and then just covering it up, or are they actually guilty of hurting her? So that's kind of a, a question that's going on in there right now. The one way I'll address that is um, we we try to be very careful in Heidi Ho controversy, which has been our main main group, and there has never been any evidence that she was hurt. Um, or the, the McCanns physically hurt her. So we, we, we don't, I don't like to actually go to how that happened or what happened, but I have noticed in, while I was trying, uh, while I was putting the uh, transcription from Gonzalo Morales videos, which are in Portuguese, I have noticed uh, that he has occasionally alluded to the fact that there may be more to it. Don't want to start anything with that. I'm just quoting, not quoting, but paraphrasing oh. what um, what he said, that there is a possibility. Uh, but I do believe it was an accident. I want to believe it was an accident, put it that way. We don't know, so I, it's really not something we can we can make an assessment on. Um, okay. So the next question um, from the salty bitch, I, I don't want to forget Mad. Mad is asking about the DNA, that the father went back to the UK to get something that may have had her DNA on it. Yes, that's exactly it. And this is another issue. There was so little DNA in the apartment, which is odd. This child was supposed to have been there the whole week. And yet... He had to go back to UK to get her pillowcase from the UK so that they could use it to get her DNA. Now, is that not something which stands out to you as very, very odd? Um, they claimed that the toothbrushes they all shared. Um, oh, the, here's another one. They claim they, they, they didn't they didn't pass over a hairbrush. 
her hairbrush. Now, there's one of the main things that you would have for DNA, right? Now, they, they didn't pass it over. Now, what was odd was a couple of months later, they contacted that African chap who had his special machine. And I actually have the video of him taking the hairbrush that the McCann supplied with hair in it and doing his little thing on it, which of course was a load of, what's it? <laughs> but they wouldn't give that hairbrush over to the police at the time. Is that not, uh, is that not, um, not odd, uh, suspicious. That's the word I want that Jerry has to take a trip back to England to find something that is specifically from Maddie. I mean, why not use the pillar case, case that she was using while she was there? That is outrageous to me. They did actually prove um, in the files that the DNA was Maddie's I think, from, from the twins. And of course, the DNA comes from so much of Jerry and so much of Kate. And so the twins and Maddie would have kind of commonalities between that. But when they actually came down in forensics, this is a bit off topic here, but I just want to mention it. When they actually did take the DNA, especially from the, 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 P, the, the DNA that was found in the car, which was... 15 of Madeline's 19 allows were found along with another 12 or 13, I think. So there was like 32 allows. They had the ability to exclude everybody, including the officers who took the, picked up the um, blood. And it was blood because that's, was why they had the cadaver dogs and the blood dogs. They didn't care about rest of DNA. There'd be a lot of DNA in that car that was Maddie's. But they specifically only alert to blood. So again, I've, I've lost my tangent. I hope I was uh, heading in the right direction there that they, they actually Madeline's, oh, that's right. Yeah, it was proven from the forensics that that was Madeline's DNA that was used. But when it came to being used against some of the forensics that were found, they didn't exclude the twins, the parents, the officers, anybody that was in the car. They had all the reference codes for those and they did not use them and exclude them. And that was a very odd thing, which one of the forensic uh, people later did say. Why? Wouldn't you want to have, if you had the ability to exclude other, other uh, DNA from other people out of that 32 allows, then why wouldn't you? But they didn't. And that's questionable. So, yeah, he had to go back and get a pillowcase. So thanks for that little, little salty. <laughs> yeah, they claim the three children shared a toothbrush and weird for doctors to do that, of course. But this is the whole thing is everything they're claiming is weird because they're trying to cover up for what actually happened, I believe. So another, the one thing, this, this is different to... It's kind of on its own. What I'm doing today is basically who saw her and how they accomplished the crest deceit, which I'll get to in a minute. But the point is, the videos that I did about the discrepancies is huge. I mean, there was huge discrepancies right from Tuesday morning. Now, I initially did this in one, I think, one of my first videos which i did on another channel and those videos have subsequently been taken down 
So I am planning on doing another one with the discrepancies throughout the week, like going through the week and, and everything. So it, it's the point behind this is you have to have the whole scenario put together. But anyway, that's that's where we're at. And another question from from Little Salty. Why is CB being labeled as the probable kidnapper killer of Madeline? Are the authorities that uncertain that certain because the prosecutor appears confident in his guilt no <laughs> this i'm sorry to laugh on this because once again and i didn't mention him last week but i have to refer to mark Salnokonako's podcast i absolutely recommend that anybody who considers christian bruckner as being involved needs to listen to just um Google, they've taken her, um, Nine News Australia. That should get you to the podcasts. If not, I, I know Carrie's, oh, Carrie is here. Hello, Carrie, I just seen her. <laughs> She's not supposed to be here. Just want to say really quick, though, Claire has been holding up the, the link side, and she's been doing great. Oh, thank you so much, Claire. I Oh, you are also great. I What would I? This is like starting a new life, you know, with doing lives and having all these lovely people around me. And anyway, where where was I? <laughs> yeah, check out Mark Selnokonoko. Yeah. Uh, podcast, because that will tell you that the prosecutor appears confident. Yeah, he appears it. But he's not because he doesn't know anything, and he he actually admits he doesn't know. So this is really weird. And if you listen back to some of what Pat said last uh, the week before last about uh, Christian Bruckner, I think she's in total agreement, and uh, she'll give you a little bit of uh, an input on that. So, but I I do want to get on. I don't want to take it too long today, and I do want to get on with what I think. Uh, this is. This is something I'm so proud of. Um, when I discovered about the crash receipt, uh, crash receipt, crash deceit, I know that nobody else has found it. I discovered it by chance just in 2018, three years ago, less than three years ago. And uh, it was a light bulb moment. And at that point I thought, wow, because the point is for any of us that, um, claim that uh, something happened to Maddie um, prior to Thursday, I think it's our responsibility to explain how they got away with it. Because if you can't explain how they got away with it, then it's really not good to, to, to well, I, I did it for several years, but it's really not, you really should. I feel responsible and I've found what I believe is the answer. So, um, I will just answer little Salty's question here. Oh no, it's the same question. <laughs> okay, we're done with that question. So is yeah, that sorry, sorry, I got a phone call, so I didn't get to take that off yet. Quite all right. Sorry. Quite all right. <laughs> and I wasn't on mute when my phone started blurring, so I was scrambling trying to hit the mute button. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm surprised I haven't had a call today, but anyway. So I think I'd, I I don't want to keep it going too long. And this is a, a kind of a weird one because it's so important to me. As I say, I'm so proud of, of my accomplishments in this. And I know nobody else has it. Nobody else has done a Who Saw Madeline um, research. And I, I feel positive and I'll tell you why in the middle as to why I'm the probably the only one that managed to actually figure out a very, very, very simple technique that Jerry, the McCanns and Russell O'Brien used to have it appear that Madeline was in the crash during the week. It's so simple and so cunning. It's a real cunning technique and I absolutely believe that this is what happened. And I'll tell you why I believe it over and above um, just the facts that I've seen. Uh, thanks, Denise. 
Well, I'm I'm going to be asked, Pat and I, we've always got along. We both respect each other. And, and uh, I mean, crikey, she's, she's a profiler. She knows what she's doing. She goes by evidence. I'm a researcher. So I go by the facts of my research and the conclusions I come to. So that's two different things, really. So, um, and it doesn't matter who you want to believe. You don't have to believe me. Um, Pat's the professional belief, Pat, or if you question something, whatever, it's up to you. And this is why, this is the research that I can produce to you to show you why after 14 years, I have claimed, I believe Madeline died early in the week, not died. Something happened to her. I don't know when she died. So, okay, I'm going to get on now with the crash deceit. I'm not sure. I hope it's not as long. I'll try not to make it too long because it is, uh, but it's important because this is, I want to send this to the Portuguese police. I think it's important for them to, uh, yes, sorty, I'll do that right for you and, and little sorty. Um, yeah, it was, I believe it was the first one I did back in September, I think, of last year. But it's gone now, so I'll redo it. Okay. Yeah, so this is for the PJ. So that's why. And also, I mean, it's very simple for me to say, as I've always said, yes, I didn't see any any indication that anybody or any proof that somebody saw Maddie during the week. But that's just my word you're going on. And as long as this may have been, at least now, I've got it out there for you to be able to choose for yourself and see for yourself. That's what's important to me. Okay. So 